This is Real News Media TV, coverage you can trust. Please like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates. Police keeping quiet at $400,000 demand received for missing taxi driver. There has been deafening silence from the police following allegations that a taxi driver was kidnapped in St. Catherine on Tuesday and that a demand for $400,000 has been made for his release. Sources told the news early Tuesday morning that the 36-year-old taxi operator, whose name is being withheld, left his mother's house in Listed St. Catherine and headed to Spanish Town, where he operates. Hours later, his girlfriend received a call from someone on his cellular phone demanding the ransom. The matter was reported to the police and a team of investigators from the St. Catherine North Police Division as well as a team from the Counter-Terrorism and Organized Crime Investigation Branch of the Jamaica Constabulary Force went in search of the taxi operator. Police sources say the investigators identified a red zone based on where the cellular call had been made to the taxi driver's girlfriend, but they failed to find him or his alleged kidnappers. Up to late yesterday, there was no official word from the police on the case, with one senior officer understanding that the JCF does not comment on kidnappings. Calls made by the news yesterday to the taxi operator's cellular phone number went straight to voicemail. Since the start of this year, there have been no reports of kidnappings listed among the major crime statistics produced by the JCF. Up to Thursday, the police had recorded 638 murders across the island since the start of the year, 14 more than the same period last year. Shootings numbered 560, a slight decline from the 569 recorded over the same period last year. The police figures also showed a 44% decline in the number of reported rape cases and a 22% decline in robberies. Alleged owner of dogs that mauled a saint and woman charged. The alleged owner of two dogs that attacked and left a 61-year-old woman severely injured has become the first person to be charged under the Dogs Act 2020. Carlington Reed of Eltham District has been charged with criminal negligence and will appear in the St. Anne's Bay Parish Court on July 6. Bavet Watson Balfour, also from Eltham in Ocherias, was reportedly attacked on the morning of June 12 as she walked along the road on her way to work. Two dogs, described as pit bulls, attacked her legs and she fell on the roadway, left slippery from overnight rainfall. The dogs then began biting her all over her body. Co-workers heard her cries from her nearby workplace and rushed to the scene. They found her struggling with both dogs. The animals were eventually restrained and Watson Balfour taken to receive medical attention. The case against the alleged owner will be closely watched as it will be the first prosecution under the act that was passed last November, replacing a more than 100-year-old piece of legislation. Under the act, anyone injured by another's dog while in public place has up to six years to file a civil claim. The dog owner can also be charged with a criminal offense punishable by a fine of up to $500,000 or up to six months imprisonment. Those penalties may be doubled if the owner was previously warned. If someone dies or is incapacitated as a result of a dog attack, the owner can face a minimum of five years in jail, but this can go up to 15 years if the owner did nothing to restrain the dog or help during the attack. The dogs that attack Watson Balfour have since been impounded by the Jamaica Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals. St. Mary Man charged with five counts of buggery. Sheridan Shepard of a St. Mary address was on Thursday charged by investigators for allegedly boogering several minors whose ages range from 6 to 12 years old. Shepard, who resides in the town of Highgate in the parish, was charged with five counts of buggery, indecent assault, and grievous sexual assault. Investigators have revealed that several parents in the Highgate area reported they left their children in Shepard's care who was offering counseling sessions to the minors. Police sources revealed that Shepard was severely beaten by angry residents two weeks ago after they accused him of sexually molesting the minors. 
According to the Highgate Police, Shepard is also under investigation in another child sex abuse case. Police sources stated that Shepard arrived in Highgate over two years ago and quickly developed a good relationship with neighbors. Cops want victim statement in Dowdy beating. The police want to collect a statement from 17-year-old Kaylan Dowdy, who was beaten within an inch of her life last November and is currently on life support. On Wednesday, when the matter was mentioned in the corporate era parish court, the investigating officer indicated that the police are monitoring the teenager's condition. Consequently, another mention date was set for July 15, and bail for the five women accused of battering Dowdy was extended. The accused, 22-year-old waitress Timon Williams, 33-year-old Nadine Aldridge, who is unemployed, 28-year-old call center representative Sakina McLeod, 26-year-old sales rep Christian Lewis, and 45-year-old laborer Yolan Vassal are all charged with wounding with intent and unlawful wounding. The past student of Papine High School was reportedly attacked and battered by a group of women on Saturday, November 7, at an illegal party in Barbican, St. Andrew. She was allegedly beaten, kicked, and stabbed in the neck. Dowdy, who was unconscious and had to be fitted with a pacemaker, was reportedly attacked after being accused of staring at one of the women at the party. Altrich is represented by attorney at law Samoy Campbell, while Shamar Hansen is the lawyer for McLeod. Attorney at law Peter Champagne QC and Richard Lynch represent Vassal and Lewis, respectively. Child Protection and Family Services Agency wants to locate smoking boys in viral video. The Child Protection and Family Services Agency is seeking the public's assistance in locating two young boys seen smoking in a viral video. In the almost 30-second video, the boys can be seen lighting what one of them referred to as my weed. The agency is asking anyone with information about the location of the two young boys to contact them at 876-822-7031 or 876-499-1764 or through email at info at childprotection.gov.jm. Phone stealing cop loses appeal. A district constable who had been sentenced to nine months in prison for stealing a cellular phone, which was a court exhibit, has lost an appeal against his conviction. The Court of Appeal, in dismissing the appeal Thursday, however, set aside the nine months sentence and substituted it for a term of eight months and three weeks to account for the week that the appellant had spent on pretrial remand. Karen Morrison, who was attached to the Bull Bay Police Station in St. Andrew, was convicted in the corporate era parish court on July 2015 after he was found guilty of larceny as a servant. The district constable was suspected of stealing a BlackBerry cellular phone from the safe at the Bull Bay Police Station in March 2011. The phone in question was an exhibit in a matter before the parish court. A report was then made to the then anti-corruption branch and an investigation launched. Morrison was subsequently arrested and charged after the phone was discovered in the possession of his friend who explained that he got it from Morrison. However, Morrison, after his conviction, was released on $300,000 bail pending his appeal. According to Morrison's attorney, Peter Champagne QC, his client had appealed on the grounds that information that he provided to the police regarding the phone was given under duress as he was being questioned by his superior. Please remember to like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates.